Sweden may be a small country that you might second guess when it comes to military, but for a country of peace and prosperity, believe it or not, it's got a lot of bite behind it. And although some may have some issues with the current level of spending within the military, you have to admit that the technology that Sweden has invested in has helped Sweden great in the modern world. And with that today, we look at one of the most amazing and advanced submarines in the entire world. One that you would raise your eyebrow over if I told you it comes from the country of Sweden. And with that, today we look at Sweden's Gotland submarine and look at not only how great it is, but how it was capable of eluding the entire American fleet for over a year. How's it going everybody? What's up? My name is Dave Wapple and welcome to FTD Facts, the channel where I look at people, cultures, and places from all around the world. And in this type of video, we're looking at military gear and... I gotta say, guys, I'm really excited to be talking about the Gotland submarine. It is so advanced. It is so amazing. I am absolutely blown away that Sweden has made something like this. You know, you don't think of Sweden as this major technologically advanced military country. Sweden alone does a lot of great technological achievements, but in terms of military, you're just like, mm, maybe? So at the beginning of this video, I already got to salute the Swedes and say you guys are some smart son of a guns. And before I get in this video, if you guys like learning about military content and you want to learn more about stuff from Sweden or just military gear in general, just hit that like button and don't forget to leave a comment for a future FTD Facts video down there. But let's get started, shall we? So the Gotland submarine, it might be a diesel electric submarine, which many of you guys to yourself might be saying, oh, well, that's outdated. That's old. You know, that's pish posh. Nuclear submarines are better. Not necessarily. Because even though it is not a nuclear submarine, it is considered one of the most advanced submarines in today's worlds, even by the standards in 2019. And what makes this submarine so fantastic is the fact that this sub is extremely quiet. You know, you can't hear it. It's impossible. You have to have the best gear and the best ears in the world to hear this sub. Basically, it was so deadly that it managed to slip past American forces and destroy the USS Ronald Reagan in a war game. By the way, when this happened, the Ronald Reagan was one of the newest aircraft carriers for the entire American fleet. And when I mean that they blew up this aircraft carrier, I don't mean they actually blew it up. What they did was during the war games, they managed to get close enough to take photos of the aircraft carrier, which in turn meant that they were capable of firing a torpedo at it and take it down. So you might be wondering to yourself, how did this happen? Why is this engine so quiet? Well, with that, we got to go back to 1987 and 1988. During that year, the defense company known as Cockham's Naval Solutions, which is owned by the subgroup, which makes the Sub Gripen and all those great amazing fighters for Sweden, the company had recently developed a new form of engine for their submarines. This was called the Stirling Air Independent Propulsion Engine, or simply known as AIP. And in November of 1937, they installed this new type of engine on an older Nacken class submarine, known as the HSWMS Nacken. As a matter of fact, to get this new AIP Sterling engine, the submarine itself had to go into dry dock and had to be extended by eight feet. Basically, they cut that baby right in half, split it, and then they added some more uh, metal, whatever they put on submarines. And shortly after that, this submarine left its dry dock on September 8th, 1988, and began years of testing for this new engine. So you might be wondering yourself, what is so good about this engine? Why does it help this submarine be so quiet? One downside to the diesel electric engines from the past is they were extraordinarily loud and they rattled and vibrated a lot and you could hear that through the sonar. But for this particular engine, its vibration amount is down to a very, very, very small amount and it makes it really hard to hear. One other big drawback to diesel electric engines is back in the day, you couldn't stay underwater for a long time compared to nuclear submarines, which yes, still to this day have a much longer range and can stay underwater for a long time. The new Sterling AIP engines allow the diesel electric submarines to work continuously operating underwater by burning liquid oxygen or diesel, which in turn allows the submarine to stay underwater in operation from a few days to simply a few weeks. And that's another thing when it comes to nuclear reactors within nuclear submarines, they can also be quite loud. 
But another major advantage when it comes to the detection of submarines is that the AIP engine and the submarine itself is capable of keeping its infrared signature very, very low. And with the Gotland submarine specifically, these engines are designed to drive the 75 kilowatt propulsion system. As a matter of fact, to give you an idea how silent these engines actually are, one of the commanders of the HSWMS Gotland named Eric Linden says that this submarine is capable of going into much more shallow shores compared to nuclear submarines, which in turn says that there is nowhere in the world that this submarine could go undetected. Now let's jump back to the Nakin because it took only a couple of years for them to figure out the test for this engine was extremely successful. Because it was only shortly after that the HSWMS Gotland was commissioned on October 10th of 1992, and it was the first of three Gotland class submarines that were commissioned by Sweden, which all three were launched in 1995 and commissioned in 1996. This also made the HSWMS Gotland the first ship to be made specifically for the AIP system. Also with that, let's look at some of the specifics of the Gotland class submarine. As stated, there is currently three of them owned by Sweden. This is the Gotland, the Upland, and the Holland. And as for the length of this class of ship, it comes in at 190 feet or 60.4 meters. The beam length is 20 feet 4 inches by 6.2 meters, and the draft is 18 feet 4 inches or 5.6 meters. And as a matter of fact, for this submarine, it actually has four different engines. It's got a lot. The reason for that is because two of them are the standard diesel electric MTU engines, and the other two are the Cockrum's V4-275R Sterling AIP units. Basically, let's make some things very clear here. When the craft actually uses the diesel engine, it doesn't work quite as effectively when it comes to its stealth. Whereas if you really want to engage the stealth, you have to use the AIP engine, and that's why there are four engines. Now for the speed of this craft, they say surfaced, it's anywhere between 11 knots, which is approximately 20 kilometers per hour. But submerged, of course, submarines work much better, coming in at 20 knots, which is 37 kilometers per hour. Interesting enough, when the Gotland class submarine uses its AIP engines, it actually has to move much slower for it to be extraordinarily effective. And with that, they say for the AIP, it's anywhere between 5 to 11 knots. Within this ship, you also have a very small crew of 18 to 20 officers and approximately 6 to 10 seamen. But one thing that's very interesting about this submarine is that the ship is controlled by one individual for both depth and course compared to other ships. But for weapons, interesting enough, although it is a small submarine, as a matter of fact, it's got six torpedo tubes. Four of these are the 533mm or 21 inch torpedo tubes, whereas two of them are a little bit smaller coming in at 400mm or 15.7 inch torpedo tubes. On top of that, this ship can be armed with 48 times externally mounted naval mines. And for torpedoes, these are actually quite dangerous. Sweden loads up the Gotland submarine with what is known as the Torpedo 2000. Sweden also calls these type of torpedoes Torpedo 62, which is made by Saab Bofors underwater system. And these torpedoes are extremely fast. They can actually go up to 40 knots. So good luck trying to outmaneuver it. For their range, believe it or not, they can go as far as 40 kilometers and the submarine itself holds approximately 16 of them. Now, I know you might be thinking to yourself, oh, these submarines are a little bit older compared to some newer things on the block. Well, as a matter of fact, Sweden thinks that these are extremely effective, that they can keep them until about 2025. In which after that, they aim to be replaced by a new type of submarine known as Project A-26. Now, here's the thing that I find that's very amazing about this submarine is the fact that during a war game in 2004, it was capable of outwitting the entire US Navy that was taking part of the war game. And it was for over a year long. It was really insane. To give you the backstory, in 2004, the HSWMS Gotland was sent to the United States for a war game simulation. This war game commenced on the West Coast, starting out of San Diego. And crazy part is, in 2005, although they had been taking part of this war game for an entire year, the US Navy had no luck in finding the Gotland. 
And because the United States knew that there was a problem with the way that they detected subs, they were like, wow, we are really determined to find the submarine, so we got to lease it for another year. And it was actually in 2005 that the Gotland sub managed to slip past many of the battle groups, which included ships, planes, and anti-submarine detection objects, and was capable of firing several torpedoes, or as I said, taking several photos at the new $6.2 billion aircraft carrier known as the USS Ronald Reagan. And as a matter of fact, the submarine was so advanced and so efficient that it was capable of destroying almost all of the nuclear submarines that were in the war game. Hmm. And of course, nowadays, the submarine is now back in the hands of Sweden. And to give you an idea of how much one of these submarines cost, it's approximately around $100 million, which is relatively close to the price of an F-35. And as a matter of fact, just on a side note, considering it is related when it comes to the AIP system, Sweden is not the only country to have submarines that have this type of propulsion engine. This is because the Cockham company has allowed Japan this technology and the ability to build these subs at least on a lease system. So there you have it guys, that is a look at one of the most advanced submarines in the entire world. So what are your thoughts on this guys? Let me know down there in the comment section below. Do you think this is one of the most advanced submarines in the world and much better than nuclear powered ones? I will say this, when it comes to nuclear powered, they do have a much longer range. Whereas unfortunately these diesel electric engines don't have the mileage, they gotta get refueled all the time. So that is kind of a downside to the Gotland class sub. But your thoughts down there. My name is Dave Wapple. Thanks for hanging out. Be sure to hit that like button if you guys want more of this content. And on top of that, before you guys get out of here, don't forget to check out some of our playlists. I got military playlists. I'll put it down there in the description box below, in the cards, and at the end of this video. I'm really going to blast it to you guys so you can see. But thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Okay, guys. So here's some of the playlists that I was telling you about. I hope you guys really liked this video. I know we got a lot of Sweden viewers, so that's really great that you guys are learning about your country. And I know we got a lot of people from other parts of the world that are learning about some of the cool technologies that the world has to offer. So with that, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, that bell notification, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.